I'm not going to dive into all the legal stuff regarding the AAC grant of rights, et cetera. But if SMU does leave to join the Pac-12, that puts the AAC back to 13 teams. Now, who are the most likely expansion candidates for the AAC if SMU joins the Pac-12? Now, it's not as easy to pick up uh, teams as it was even just last season. At this point, you're kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel. Uh, but there are certainly some intriguing candidates. I think the first option here for the AAC would be Liberty. Uh, now, they just hired former head shunt Jamie Chadwell from Coastal Carolina. They have an enrollment of 95000 Their endowment is reportedly $1.7 billion. And Lynchburg, Virginia is directly between Charlotte and Washington, D.C. They've got the recruiting ground. They'll have a huge alumni base. And this program has shown the desire to spend on their athletics programs in ways that a lot of sc uh, small schools, not that they would not, they just cannot. Like, this would be a big-time get, I think, for the AAC. And now, if something were to get in the way of this or if the AAC decides that they don't want to be involved with a religious institution, there are, and I would understand that, I guess, uh, there are some other schools that could make sense as well, right? Uh, Toledo. They've been a member of the MAC since 1950. Their enrollment is only around 18,000. Their endowment is around 550 million, but they are in a talent rich football centric area. It's tucked in the corner of Lake Erie between Detroit and Cleveland. It's only like 140 miles from Columbus. Uh, they're the best team in the MAC. And an AAC deal would allow them to stop having their head coach flirt with leaving to become a Power Five offensive coordinator, which has been rumored for like two straight seasons. Uh, travel might be an issue as Toledo is not close to any other AAC schools. Like, they're over 500 miles from Charlotte and Philly, nearly 700 miles to Memphis, over 850 to Tulsa, all of which are their closest neighbors. Now, of course, that pales in comparison to USC and UCLA and the Big Ten. Uh, but the AAC, they ain't offered Big Ten money, right? So that, that's a little bit of an issue. Uh, what about Buffalo? Now, academically, this is going to be quite the get. Uh, the endowment is over a billion dollars, enrollment over 30,000, uh, excuse me, 30,000. Whew. Um, yeah, yeah, Buffalo. Uh, endowment uh, over a billion, their enrollment over 30,000. And it would be the conference's third AAU member, along with Tulane and Rice. Uh, and Rice, of course, just joining this year. The SEC only has five AAU schools, and that includes Texas, who isn't even here yet. And, you know, if, if the AAC were to grab Buffalo, that would make them have three. So right up there as far as uh, academics are concerned. Um, Buffalo just joined the FBS in 1999. They've already been in six bowl games. They've played in the MAC title game three times. Uh, they invest in their athletics programs, and they have continuously made good hires. Uh, that's as evidenced by Turner Gill in the late 2000s, uh, Lance Leipold in the late 2010s, and then, of course, the basketball coaches Bobby Hurley and Nate Oates. Now, on top of that, the school is less than 400 miles away from Philadelphia and Annapolis. Like, you still run into the geography issues you do with Toledo, uh, but at least you've got you know, some schools within 400 miles there. Like, we'll see. Another interesting idea here is would the AAC want to try and steal a Mountain West school? Like, UNLV is my last interesting proposition here. Uh, the AAC has shown a propensity to want schools in big metropolitan areas, which helps with eyeballs, branding, sponsorship opportunities, etc. UNLV would be right up their alley. Now, the issue there is, again, geography. The closest AAC schools to UNLV would be, I mean, well over 1,200 miles away. Uh, but flights into Vegas are a lot easier to come by than getting to Buffalo or Toledo, right? Uh, toss in the recruiting footprint, uh, another time window, a big student enrollment, along with potential gambling sponsorship dollars, and you could have something very interesting on your hands. Now, the other side of that is, would it make sense for UNLV? Like, that's for the Rebels to figure out, but it's, it's certainly an exciting option for the AAC. Psst. Hey, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and of course, jump in the comments. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app, and make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE, and the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.